Hi guys, welcome back to The Crafty Author. My name is Anissa and I am The Crafty Author. Today we are going to be working on a project that I need to finish up for Christmas for my grandson. So, um, I've taught you how to make several different types of rag quilts. Um, this is going to be no exception. This is going to be another different type of rag quilt. So, I've made different uh, rag quilts with different types of methods. Um, and this is just one of those other different methods that I'm using. So a while back, I showed you some quilts that I had made, um, you know, years ago. And one of them was a camo fleece quilt, camo fleece rag quilt that I had made for my son. Well, I am going to be making a fleece quilt for my grandson not it's not camo it's going to be puppies <laughs> so um i've already started cutting out um the little fleece squares so this is going to be my backing fabric it is really really soft uh this was that um fleece fabric that my husband and i got and um i didn't realize that it was like 26 dollars a yard <laughs> so this is the most expensive fleece rag quilt i've ever made um, so that's what this is. And I am actually cutting it with my AccuQuilt rag die. And this is what it looks like. And I am having to do this one at a time, one layer at a time, because the fleece is so thick. Um, when I did my son's years ago, I didn't have an AccuQuilt. And so I actually hand cut all of that fringe. So, I mean, it's kind of... You know, I mean, it's going to take me a little bit to cut this out with my rag quilt, but it will definitely, uh, with my Accu quilt, but it will definitely be faster than, than clipping all of these when it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish making this, uh, or cutting all of this out. I need 35 of these backing squares, and then I need 17 of the puppy dog fleece squares, and then I had to come up with another um, print for the front, um, another, I think it's, wait, sorry, it's 18 for the puppy dogs and 17 for the, um, the other print. And I'm probably going to use flannel for that. So I have plenty of flannel fabric that I can cut and, um, and then I'll start putting it together and I'm going to show you how I do that. So I'm going to finish cutting this and then I'll come back and we'll get started putting it all together. I have uh, my some of my fleece prepped. I cut them into 10 inch strips just to make it easier since I have to do these one at a time. Um, I want to make sure that um, I have these cut correctly. So I did do 10, 10 inches, 10 by 10, just so it'll fit on my block even though the block is eight, um, as you can see. See, I've prepared it here. I'm just putting this, um, I'm putting this on the actual die itself. And I'm just going to lay that on top. And then I'm going to put this uh, cutting mat on it. And then I'm just gonna run it through my, my AccuQuilt. And it is cutting through a very, very thick layer of fleece. This fleece is really, really thick. So, and then I'm just going to rub out all of the static. And I'm going to pull that off. Okay, I'm all covered in uh, fleece fuzz over here. Um, but anyway, I wanted to show you what I'm doing here. So, I've gone ahead and I've cut all of the pieces for this. So, you can see that they're all fringed. And I did that with my Accu Quilt. Now, if you don't have an Accu Quilt, that's fine, don't worry about it. You would just cut your squares to whatever size you want them. Um, you can do them 10 by 10, you can do them eight by eight, whatever, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, you'll cut your squares. You're gonna cut all the fabric for, for all of it. So for this, I needed 35 squares for the front, 35 squares for the back. Um, and I'm doing it in different fabrics, so 18 of the puppy dog, and then I cut 
17 of this blue flannel. This is fleece, this is flannel. And then I did um, that really thick, really soft, pretty white fleece. You can see that I've got fuzz everywhere. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to take the two pieces. So what I did was I took my, my red puppy dog piece and then a white piece for the back. And I'm just sewing an X on here. And um, I'm actually chain stitching. I have a whole bunch of them right here already done. So um, I'm gonna finish doing that stack, but I wanted to show you that this is how you do it. So you put the X right here. Now, you can put batting in between. A lot of people do. Um, I have made one of these before with fleece, and I can tell you these are extremely heavy and they are extremely warm. So you do not need batting in the middle of the fleece ones, okay? So um, I'm not putting batting in mine. And uh, so I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna go off camera. I'm gonna finish putting all of these blocks together. And then uh, when I finish doing that, I will come back and show you how we attach the blocks together themselves um, and also how to attach the rows. And then we will pretty much be done, okay? Hi everyone, all right, so now we are putting these together. I'm gonna to show you how I sew these blocks together. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this is the start of my first row here. And then I'm gonna grab another one. And all I'm going to do is take these two pieces and I'm going to put the backing sides together. And I'm going to line them up like so. And I am not going to pin them or anything. You can pin them if you want to, but you want these two back sides to be like this. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is come to my sewing machine now and I'm gonna sew probably about mm, an inch away from where I have all my fringe cut. If you don't have your fringe cut, you're gonna to wanna to sew about an inch away so that you will have room to cut your fringe. So I'm gonna do this. And I also wanted to mention that when you're working with fleece, um, it is not going to rag like you would normally see a rag quilt rag. It's it's just not gonna do it. So it would this part won't. This will stay like this forever for the duration of the, the blanket. Um, at least that's what my sons did. Now, I don't know about this flannel piece. Um, it might twist into these fleece fibers. I don't know because this is the first time that I've actually mixed fleece with flannel. So I'm not 100% sure on that one. So don't uh, hold me to it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece and I'm just going to repeat that. And if you're working with fleece, it is going to be very, very fuzzy and messy. So don't wear black, like what I'm doing. And then when you uh, finish, you are going to want to clean out your sewing machine very, very well. You're gonna want to use a brush and uh, clean in your where your bobbin area is. You're gonna wanna clean up top because you're gonna have fuzz everywhere. Just a word to the wise. So then again, I'm just taking another piece, putting it back sides together, and then I just flip it to this side, like so, and I sew an inch down. And this is what creates this, this row here. I'm gonna finish this row with you on camera with me. And then I'm going to show you how to attach to a row. So, just pulling this up, matching up. And I'm also using a walking foot. That is very helpful with this because this is very, very thick. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you how to attach them row by row. And I did put a different color on the back here, as you can see. 
and that is because I ran I didn't have enough of the white for the back so I just improvised all right so now let me grab another row that I have you're gonna want to grab a close-up of this and my husband is helping out by videoing so you guys get a really good look at how we're doing this so you will need pins for this and what we're going to do is this is my top piece here okay and this is my my next row piece all i'm going to do is i'm going to take i'm going to flip this part up here like so and i'm going to take my bottom half and i'm going to line up the back sides together in the corner here now these are i'm going to pin it and um i forgot what i was going to say <laughs> if it comes back to me i'll let you know you also want to butt up these seams you kind of want them to match up on the back side so i'm just gonna push one seam underneath this way and this seam i'm going to push that way and that way i can line these up and hopefully get them as even as i possibly can on the back side it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect but it will get the job done so you're just pinning because you want this part to to match up oh I know what I was gonna tell you okay so I know that a lot of you will not have your fringe pre-cut and that's okay that will probably actually make it easier for you to do this um, to do this process because then you're not contending with all the fringe sometimes I sew the fringe into <laughs> places it's not supposed to be sewn into okay so there's that one and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin this edge here just like I did when we first started and just to hold it in place now what we do is we take this to the sewing machine and we sew an inch down right along just like we did when we attached the blocks and I'm just gonna start sewing I'm gonna back stitch just a tad you don't need to back stitch a whole lot are you getting a close-up of that yep I know sometimes my hands get in the way because I have to kind of guide this okay and you can hear how thick that is okay so I'm getting closer and I'm going to push my fringe out of the way just like that and then I'm gonna sew over that very thick seam and keep going okay try not to get my fingernail caught in the thread of the machine there I'm gonna pull that pin out it goes fairly quick and especially once you just sit down and start sewing you'll have this down in no time okay it's attached here's what it looks like on this side you can see I caught some of the the little fringies but it's okay and look at that so this is why we pin 
because we want to be as close as we can get to having these seams match up. They might don't match up perfectly, but they do enough. So this is what we have. Here's back. All right, so I am going to finish attaching all of these rows. I'm going to throw this in the washing machine, and then I will take a picture of this when it is all finished and show you what the end result looks like. Okay, I have the uh, rag quilt with fleece and flannel finished. It's been washed and it has been dried. And you can see right here that the flannel is ragging up nicely and that the fleece stays really nice and soft, just fringed the way that it is. I'm very happy with the way that this turned out. I'm gonna post some pictures um, at the end so that you can see the rest of this, but this is it for me. So if you would like to follow me on social media, the links are down below in the description box. Don't forget to give this video a like and Feel free to share it and keep on crafting. And don't forget that I have a 10,000 subscribers giveaway going on right now. I will put that link down below in the description as well. Make sure that you enter. And that's it. So stay tuned to see the rest of the pictures. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.